Hello, and welcome back to my kitchen. Hey, today I'm gonna to be making some brown gravy. Um, I've been wanting for some time now to do a series on sauces. Now there's a lot of different kinds of sauces, a lot of different kinds. And I wanted to begin this whole series with a, something very familiar to all of us, which is gravy, brown gravy. Now normally you take a beef roast, something like this. This is a chuck roast. And we would roast it up in the oven. After roasting it, we'd end up with these juices because I add a little water to it and some flavoring, which is usually Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, and salt. And so I end up with great juices, what we call drippings, to run through a strainer, something like this. And then into a pot like this, we heat it, all right? We heat those drippings until they come to a boil. And then we add a thickener and start thickening it up. And then we adjust our seasonings of flavors if needed. If we need a little more acid, we add that. If we need a little more salt, we, we pull that in. So that's all adjusted right at the very end and we end up with this beautiful velvety brown sauce that goes great on meat. It's unbelievably good on potatoes. I mean, folks, really good stuff. So we begin this whole series on sauces with brown gravy. It's an easy one to do, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you how to do it today as if you didn't roast anything up. Okay, what do you do if you don't have a roast? Well, today we're going to be doing it with this right here, which is some beef broth. Okay, I want to teach you how to make a brown gravy using beef broth. It's easy to do and fun. Now, down in my description box, if you would take a look at that at some point, my links are there, links to my recipes, which would be my website, and that is satrotter.com. That's right down there. All of my social media is there, my Facebook, Twitter. Also, there's Wissio and Patreon if you wish to help me out, and I'd really appreciate that. I appreciate folks helping. So let's get into this, and we're going to make delicious sauce. Come on over. One thing's for sure. You don't have to have a big old beef roast to make brown gravy. What we're going to be using today is beef broth, Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, salt, and our thickener. And I've got two different thickeners and I'm going to show you how to make brown gravy with each of them because we're going to divide this into two batches and we're going to make two identical batches, one thickened with flour, the other thickened with cornstarch and you're going to see them side by side in a side by side comparison and I'll be able to taste them for you and tell you any differences between the two. So, very simple. This is not hard to do. We need to get this stuff heating and reducing a little bit. Um, I'll mention one thing. When it comes to what do we use for our beef broth? Do I use bouillon? I'm gonna say no. Okay, I'm not big on bouillon, I'm really not. Uh, I would much rather use a liquid broth, start with that, than to start with you know a cube of some chemicals and flavorants. Um, so let's stick with good stuff. Making gravy isn't really a hard thing to do. I want to do two different batches because I'm going to teach two ways of doing this. One is making it with flour, the other is making it with cornstarch. And the neat thing about this is, is you're going to find out that either way you're going to get a fantastic gravy. However, you have some folks, they are gluten sensitive, all right? That happens in this world. And as a result, I wanted to do a gravy that addressed that very issue right there. So that's going to be a, one of them is going to be a gluten free and the other is going to be just regular old fashioned brown gravy made country style with flour. Now I'm trying to measure this out so we have an exact amount in both of these pans. There we go. Two cups in each. I'm going to take these, we're going to bring both of them to a boil. Okay, 
We're gonna bring these to a boil, and what I want to do is to reduce this. I'm looking to boil out some of the water and make this deeper and richer. Now, while we're doing that, we can go ahead and add in some flavors, because one of those flavors, oh, that's Worcestershire sauce. Now, when I'm making a roast, I use Worcestershire sauce in the roast, and then sometimes I'll add more to the gravy if the gravy was not, oh, let's say, if it needs a little acid, let's say, if it's kind of flat, I'll add Worcestershire sauce to perk it right up, and it works. There we go. I'm gonna do two tablespoons in each one of these. It's gonna give me a deep, rich, bold gravy that's got a nice acidic bite to it that's delicious. It's quite desirable. I want to put a pinch of salt into each one of these, all right? That's about a quarter of a teaspoon at most. Okay, that was about six rounds off of each one, uh, or off of this into each one of these, and that usually gives me about a half a teaspoon. So here I have everything in my pot. They're coming up in temperature. All right, once these have come to a boil and have reduced, at that point, we're then going to start doing our thickeners. And um, once we do the thickeners, we let those cook for just a short bit. The flour has to cook. The cornstarch doesn't, but sometimes you can do that. It doesn't hurt anything. And uh, so we're gonna cook them afterwards, and then we're gonna try out our gravies to see which one is the best, or if there's any difference at all. Oh yeah, these are doing what they are supposed to do, coming to a boil, and I'm gonna try to boil them as evenly as possible so we get a good even reduction there. Uh, after all, this is an experiment using two different ones. Now I've done this gravy myself many times both ways. Uh, but I want for you guys to see side by side the difference. Um, I wanted to discuss right quick our thickeners. Okay, I've got flour and I've got cornstarch. I have a couple of uh, items here that I normally use myself when I'm working with these items. Cornstarch is weird. When you first put it into water, it acts like it's just not going to mix. And you keep pulling at it, it's in the bottom of the, the water, in the, in the bottom of the cup, and, and the water's over it, and you keep pulling at it with a spoon, and it feels like it just turned into a solid lump. And then suddenly, bam, almost instantly, you'll feel it give loose, and it will, at that point, just dissolve right in. <laughs> it's kind of weird how it does that, but it does. Now, flour, I wish it was as gr agreeable to get it to mix, but a lot of times it likes to form lumps. The best way I've found of preventing lumps in flour when using it as a thickener is this little guy. It's what's called a standard bar shaker, okay? Bar shaker doesn't mean that you're an alcoholic. It just means that you're a well-equipped uh, chef, all right? So these can be used for a lot of stuff, and especially when it comes to making gravies, they're very handy. So we'll put our flour in this and then put some water in this and then shake them. Now. The first intuition, the first time you make a thickener for a gravy is, well, I've got a hot liquid. I should use hot water to mix with that hot liquid and that way I don't lose my heat. I don't have to bring it back up in temperature again. No, no, no. Uh, this is something I have to caution you about and it's the reason I wanted to do this little insert right here. When it comes to mixing flour and water, always use cold water. It doesn't have to be refrigerator cold, but you know, not hot, tap water cold. You know, around 70 to 80 degrees is a really nice temperature for your water to be, to mix with flour. If you use hot water, then it does what it's going to do in the pan, which is absorb, expand, and, oh. When something expands, it has to go someplace. In a pot with an open top, then it's easy. But when you have a closed container, that pressure builds quickly. So if you shake hot water and flour together, they will explode. It will explode all over you and your face and your kitchen. It'll make a big mess and it will likely burn you as, you, as it happens. 
don't do it. All right, do not shake hot water and flour together. Always cold. Now you don't have to use a shaker either. You can just use a mason jar if you want to, uh, or you know they make some small plastic shakers. Look into that. You'll find something that's useful for you that works well. We're going to wait for these to finish reducing. That'll probably be oh 30 minutes in my time and three seconds in yours. So right now, since they've now come to a boil, I want to hit my start button. We'll just let it count up and do what my count up timer does. And it's a neat thing to have around. Often I try to keep it in the camera frame so you guys can reference it. All right, we have cooked these down. They have reduced easily by about one third or slightly more each. Okay, and that's what I was needing. I was wanting to concentrate that beefy flavor. Um, and here's part of it. Part of it is we're gonna be pouring water back in there. All right, so I needed it concentrated because we're gonna reconstitute it. Now I want, I have one cup of water. I'm going to pour a half a cup of this water right down in this dish. And we're getting there. All right, the other calf I'm gonna put in my shaker. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start with getting some flour out. Now, if you notice, I didn't get an eighth of a cup and I didn't get a full quarter of a cup. It's somewhere in between there. But it's more than enough for what we're doing here. All right, flowers in the shaker. For the water down here, my cornstarch. Again, I'm not measuring. I don't need to. Okay, got about a tablespoon there maybe a little more all right definitely more there now if you'll notice the cornstarch just doesn't want to immediately mix and it's going to sink to the bottom and form a nice little lump okay all i can do is just work it around and eventually that little lump on the bottom is going to break free it's soft it's moving around so we have this thickener ready to go and I want to use this thickener in this pan and we're going to use the uh, flour in the back pan however the flour needs to cook where the cornstarch does not so I'll take my flour and pour the water right into that half a cup shake I'm gonna say this bar shakers have a tendency to leak a little bit Having something around to catch that is a smart thing to do. So I'll put down a paper towel. Now, back here, I'm gonna increase on the heat on that back burner just a little bit. I'm gonna pour in just a little of my thickener and bring it up in temperature. So, as this heats, that flour is going to expand, it's gonna do its thing, and it's gonna end up giving us this beautiful, thick liquid, okay? All right, so that's already starting to do its thing, and I wanna bring it up in temperature and just let it cook. Now on this front one here, I'm gonna take that mixture that we made, and just gently work a little of it in. Now, I have to say, when you're working with cornstarch like this, make sure, make sure that you're stirring it as you add it. Otherwise it'll leave thick streaks in the liquid and if you try to whisk them in, it'll just break apart and end up having lumpy gravy. The one with cornstarch, distinctly darker than the one with flour, all right? So, there is a difference in appearance. Okay, I've got a fork and I like to use a fork for this. I'll coat a fork and see how well it coats. See how the stuff drips off of it. See how well it clings, okay? Is it th as thick as I want it? Okay, and then taste. Okay, I've just washed this off. That is very good. It's got a nice acidic bite to it. All the flavors are just there in the right way. This coats just about the same. Okay, darker. Hmm. Of course, 
the flavors are almost identical because of the way we made it. They taste delicious. They're both easy to make. They both have beautiful properties to them. And either of them is going to make a beautiful, perfect gravy for you. So please enjoy it. Okay, let's check our time. Now that we are at the end of this, and I'm turning off the flame on this one. I want to stir it and get a lid on it. So I've got two fantastic, beautiful gravies. A total of 29 minutes um, from the minute both of them came to a boil. So basically we're looking at about a half hour make on something like this, just for you to have a quick brown gravy that came, well, from simple measure. Okay, we used simple broth, some flavors, salt, and a thickener, and we ended up with a fabulous sauce. Now the quantity of what I started with today and, and the sort of the base gravy that I make and build on begins this way. I begin with a quart of beef broth. Now I divided this into two batches as you've seen. Um, but to that quart of beef broth, if you're making a large batch like this, you're going to use about three to four uh, tablespoons of the Worcestershire sauce. Now we used two tablespoons for each batch and that would be one tablespoon, tablespoon per cup of broth used. So I guess that's a good ratio. Let's stick with that. Also the salt. You're not going to need a lot of salt because beef broth already has plenty in it. So does that Worcestershire sauce. It's got sodium. So we want to be light on the salt around a quarter to a half teaspoons, usually more than enough. And on that black pepper, about the same, about a quarter to half teaspoon of the black pepper. And it comes out really good that way. Now on our thickeners back here, um, as you've seen, we use a little less than a quarter of a cup on that flour. And it's real, honestly about the same thing on the uh, cornstarch. I just measure it out a different way, a couple of heaping tablespoons and suddenly you're there. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and as far as what we mix that with, it doesn't take a whole lot. It only takes about a half a cup of water to uh, mix up your thickener before making the gravy. That's all there is to that recipe. Let's take a look at the finished product, see what we've got. I bet it's delicious. Okay, I've gotten some bread ready to taste this. I've got a little bit of uh, pumpernickel here. I thought that would be a neat choice. <laughs> All right, let's take a, a look at the, the brown gravy here that has flour, okay? Let's take a good close look at that. Nice brown gravy, flour. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good. Ah, it's got a sharp acidic spike to it. It should. It's got a nice peppery flavor to it from the black pepper. Nice. This one, it's a much darker in color. But remember, these both began the same. That one, right there. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, they're both absolutely perfect. Almost identical in flavor. You really, it is hard to pick out which one is which. If I had to do it with a blindfold, I would find it very, very difficult. Now, it would have been easier when the flour was fresh because there was a slight flour flavor. But now that it's cooked, that's gone. So the only way to really know is by looking at it. Is it lighter in color or darker? Otherwise you really can't tell. So use whichever method you want. You've seen the quality of it both ways and how well it works. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just excellent cooking, cooking the right way. And it leads to wonderful, wonderful, delicious results. The kind of sauce that goes great on beef, when you put it on mashed potatoes, oh, everybody loves mashed potatoes with some brown gravy. Well, not everybody, but most that I've met. All right, because it's great tasting. It works. 
So please enjoy it. And also, please enjoy what I provide at my website, satrotter.com, and the link is right down below here in the description box. Please click on that. My recipes are there. Other merchandise is there for Texas Cooking Today, as well as other products that I have. So please take a look. There's neat stuff there. And thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your sauce. And we're going to be making more sauces in days to come. So get ready.